Uh, yes, indeed. Right around the corner, May 1st, the new smoking law in our great state of Michigan goes into effect. And, well, the uh, big question is, who is going to enforce it? And we are happy to have with us a uh, man with the answers, Macomb County Sheriff Mark Hackle joining us. Sheriff, good morning. Morning, Steve. How you doing? Everything is well, sir. Uh, you know what? I'm going to just put my cards right on the table there, Sheriff. I am a smoker. I am working on it. Uh, I, I have pledged to quit before too, too long. But, you know, uh, doing some research just this past weekend uh, in a pub setting, obviously everybody talking about what's going to go into effect on May 1st. The number one question is, who is going to enforce this law? You're in a bar setting. Uh, people are having a beer or two. Uh, if you're a smoker, you're going to want to light up. Should that happen, you are now breaking the law. Take it from there, Sheriff. What happens? Again, the law was put into uh, to act uh, by the legislators. They decided that uh, for many reasons that uh, they're going to come up with a smoking ban, and they have done that. So now the question is enforcement. Uh, so now the other branch of government, that being law enforcement, has to try to make a determination um, how do we enforce this new law? And it's clearly spelled out in the law itself that it's the proprietor, the uh, the establishment owner, manager, the person who's operating the facility, who is responsible, much like those that are responsible for IDing people, making sure they're of age, uh, making sure that people are not overserved. It is their responsibility in in, in, court, uh, in accordance with the law that they have to make sure that the patrons there are not smoking in their facilities. Law enforcement then becomes the secondary responder, meaning that if for some reason the proprietor is not taking care of that uh, particular concern um, or a person is not uh, abiding by those rules, then law enforcement will be called, and it's going to be kind of a, uh, I guess, a uh, complaint-driven type of a response. Uh, we will respond in making sure that that individual is uh, adhering to the, uh, the policies, be it the owner of the establishment or the pa- patron who's actually smoking in that facility. Okay, Sheriff, let me give you a hypothetical here. Uh, all right, there's a, a, a bar owner who, uh, you know, sitting there, and a guy lights up, and it's May 2nd. The proprietor goes up and says, Sir, you're going to have to put that cigarette out. Okay, I will. Ten minutes later, a uh, bar owner looks over, guy's smoking. He then calls the local law enforcement people, the uh, the uh, city police department. The fear is, is that, uh, and there's been some municipalities that have already stepped up and said, Look, we don't want to get in the business of going to bars and restaurants looking for uh, John Q. Smoker. Is that a concern of yours? Well, it's no different than, uh, you know, whether an officer makes a traffic stop on somebody who's not wearing a seatbelt uh, and, and write him up for the violation. The bottom line is we will respond if the uh, business owner calls us and says, I've already attempted to get this person to stop smoking because my license will be in jeopardy if I do not make this call to law enforcement. We then have a responsibility uh, to respond to that. The issue then is not a matter of whether the person is smoking or not. It's now somebody who's disorderly, unruly, according to local ordinances, uh, and or trespassing if the bar owner or, or I guess, uh, the manager has asked the person to to leave the premises. It becomes a trespassing issue. So now you're elevating something to a misdemeanor violation, which really needs not get to that point. You know, do I believe that's going to be the case? No. Are there going to be a few people that test the system or test the law? Yes, they're going to be. But I think a majority of... uh, the patrons are going to be, you know, kind of uh, self-monitored. Um, uh, even the establishments are, are going to abide by the law. They're not happy about it, but the reality is it was enacted by the legislator. We're going to have to respond because it is a law if and when those type of circumstances arise like you just mentioned. Now, you, you touch on something, Sheriff, very, very important, and it bears noting again, the, the proprietors of these establishments are the ones who are supposed to enforce it first because their liquor license is on the line. Is that correct? That is correct, and then even the, you know for running the uh, the restaurant, the food service uh, right. license itself. So all the information, if there is non-compliance or people are really uh, not uh, abiding by the law, uh, this gets filtered over to the health department, uh, who manages and who uh, who watches over the licensing of these restaurants and uh, and even some of the, the bar restaurants. So for those who are under the impression that look, I know the guy at the corner bar real well, and he's going to let me light up when I want to. He can't. Because now all of a sudden, it's his derriere that's on the line. And that is correct. I mean, are there going to be some of these small uh, bars, you know, that just have you know, a few people that kind of uh, um, actually show up uh, every other day and the, or the weekend or whatever, and, you know, they, they kind of smoke their cigars or, you know, they're going to smoke their cigarettes and nobody's complaining? I'm sure that's going to happen. And uh, the reality is once there's a complaint uh, that's, that's processed uh, and there's a follow-up to it, 
that uh, business owner is going to have to adhere to it because you're right, uh, their their license will be in jeopardy. Now, these uh, bar owners, restaurants, bowling alleys, public places in general, they have the right to set up a smoking area outside, do they not? Uh, no, not if it's attached to uh, the facility. In other words, if they have like a patio area, no, they still cannot. Uh, you still cannot allow them to uh, to smoke um, anywhere on that premises. But if it's a separate building and there's no patio where food is being served, it's just if there's a- no food being served or any uh, any alcohol being consumed, then uh, that is correct. They okay, can, unless it's a public place. Right. Uh, this is this is not new to us, and when it comes to public places, that's different. In other words, like uh, like the county jail. Um, in fact, this was uh, this was enacted back uh, December 26th of 1989. We went smoke free with a county jail, and uh, that was uh, uh, then Sheriff Hackle, who was my father. He actually imposed that sanction, saying no more smoking in this public building. We were the first county jail in the state of Michigan, and uh, not even the state prison uh, had that uh, type of a rule. That was over 20 years ago we enacted it. Sure, there were some you know people that were upset at first, but uh, it kind of self-monitored itself to the point where everybody else has kind of fallen in line with the same type of uh, I guess uh, a rule within their facilities. Now it has to be a rule. Everybody has to have that uh, that same type of, uh, uh, I guess, wall within their facility. All right, Sheriff, thank you so much for joining us, as always. Really appreciate it, and uh, I look forward to seeing you and chatting with you again soon. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for having me. Yes, sir. Macomb County Sheriff Mark Hackle, a little insight as to what goes down May 1st in our great state of Michigan.